Hey, you know, Corey from Henry Show Performance. I'm going to do another little video, and it's not going to be about exhaust. So uh, what we're doing today is we're going to sort of revisit the intake comparison we did a few years ago when we compared the SNS intake, the third gear customs intake, and the Lloyd's torque tubes. So we did that video, and one of the several of the main complaints were twofold is one that the rev limiter only uh, kicked in at 5,500. So you weren't able to see um, the intakes, how they compared further up in the RPM uh, range. And the other piece was that <clears throat> only used a Lloyd VFC fuel controller to tune in the argument or the not argument, the complaint was that you can't effectively tune a Lloyd's torque tube uh with the vfc it needs to have a power commander 5 for the older bikes or the newer bikes uh would need either power commander 5 or maximum something like that so we went ahead and uh we revisited it and we did it on another v92 another 100 inch v92 but this time it was tuned with a uh, power commander 5 and we also extended the rev limiter uh on this bike to 7500 we did not take uh it quite that high on the uh, dyno because they were not making power anymore but we were able to extend it enough where we got a, a really good uh, representation of how those intakes performed. Here's a dyno graph. I want to orient to the graph on a couple things to take note of. Is one, I started the third year customs uh, intake about, I don't know, 300 RPM sooner. And I also ran uh, the Lloyd torque tubes about 400 uh, RPMs higher. But what's important to note is that both the intake and correction, the horsepower and torque for both the intakes cross over here at 5250. So we know that, uh, you know, there's not a graph that shifted left or right uh, compared to the other ones. Uh, and also down bottom here, we have the air fuel ratio. And that, that's the air fuel ratio for the Lloyd uh, torque tubes. And we kept that thing uh, pretty, pretty dead even between about uh, 12.75 and 13 to 1 uh, towards the tire race. We have a really good clean tune on it. And this being an older bike, we don't have a mechanism uh, to do much of the timing other than this ECM was sent off. that had the rev limiter extended 7,500 RPMs. And it did have two additional degrees of timing that were added to the whole curve. And then obviously down below here in this region here, we have the build that's for the bike. So what we see here is that two intakes that um, are very similar. They're probably pretty even up to about 4,000 RPMs. And then the long runner, as we talked about before, the longer runner design of the Lloyd torque tubes starts really helping out that mid-range. I'm giving it a, uh, a, a bump of about three foot-pounds of torque across uh, most of the graph and then when we start moving over here somewhere at around 5800 they even out and then when we move to the top of the range we see that the uh, short runner uh, third gear customs intake picks up somewhere in the ballpark of about uh, two two and a half horsepower it's about two horsepower so Again, that's what we so, would sort of ex suspect from a long runner to a short runner intake with all other things being um, the same. And so there you go. There is an updated comparison between the third gear customs intake and the Lloyd's torque tubes on a, a fairly potent build. And that's what you have is, you know, one intake makes a really good mid-range where you would spend, you know, where you spend most of your time cruising. They're the same where you're really, you know, rolling into the mid-range. The third gear uh, correction, the Lloyd's torque tubes is, is, is a better intake. And then when you get to 6,000 above the third gear customs, um, pulls away a bit. So there you go. That is a, a really good comparison of two intakes on the same build, same day. All right. Thank you. So a couple things I just wanted to uh, close the loop on is <clears throat> the initial uh, concern on the first video was that the Lloyd's torque tube was at a disadvantage because of the independent runner design. You can't effectively tune that with a VFC 
because you'll have spots where you're rich, you have spots where you're slightly, slightly lean, and when you lean up the when you richen up the lean spots, it makes the mid range even fatter. That was a common trend that happened on all the intakes. It was not just the uh, the Lloyd's uh, torque tubes. When you tune with a VFC, it's a compromise in regards to where you get the you know uh, you have to compromise a fat AFR uh, low and uh, low range to be able to have a good AFR up top or vice versa. It's always a compromise. But the, the impacts of that were the same regardless of what intake we use. That is a, uh, a limitation when tuning with the VFC. When we use the Power Commander 5 on a different bike but compared to the same two intakes, the horsepower difference between the Lloyd's torque tubes and the Third Year Customs was about the same spread. The Lloyd torque tubes will make more power um, in the mid-range than the third good customs will, regardless of what you use to tune it. It is the it's a product of a, of a longer runner intake uh, intake. Um, so we I think we say the the first uh, comparison of the two intakes were valid. This one here was a better comparison. We only used two intakes. Um, we ran the RPM up range up higher, so we were able to see, you know, what happens beyond 55 or 6,000 RPMs. And so we, I thought we had a pretty good comparison uh, on that. All right, we'll try to do some more of these in the future. Thank you.